Hi you guys. Welcome to Rosina Ranch Paint Night with Lisa. I'm just going to go over real quick what we're going to be doing tonight. Tonight we are going to be working on our jellyfish painting and this is going to be a 10 by 20 portrait. Um, supplies. So there's a little bit more supplies this week. What we're going to be using as far as paint brushes, we're going to be using our number one chip brush, one inch chip brush. We're going to be using our fine tip chisel brush. We also threw in there this week this very, very tiny little number zero pinpoint brush. And then of course we're going to draw out our outline with some chalk. This is a cool little neat way to just sketch out your ideas before you go ahead and put the paint down. It's easy to remove, so this is a great new technique if you guys haven't used it before. And then what I'm asking you guys to do tonight is to also have your blow dryer ready because we will need to dry paints. There's a lot of layering, but remember, if for some reason you cannot keep up with the video, um, go ahead on the chat feature on your right hand side, hit H, well just tell me H, and that says hold. I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up, but if you're not able to catch up, you guys can always go ahead and go back to the video once it's finished and then just pause as needed and rewatch the video. So with that, we will get started. All right, I'm gonna let you guys get your stuff together. I pretty much have all of my stuff together. And we will go to there. Let's see, oh wait, let's go over paints. So tonight we are using six different paints. We have our primary blue, our white, our primary yellow. We have a fluorescent fuchsia. We are also using a black and a turquoise. All right. And there's a really cool technique that we're also gonna be using tonight. And that is, if you guys can see a little bit closer up on this picture, you see little speckles in the water. And what I wanted to do was just add some dimension. And what I mean by that is if you guys have ever gone snorkeling and you guys are in the ocean, it's not perfectly crystal clear even in the tropical waters. You're going to always see a little bit of something floating around in the water. Not necessarily bubbles, but I wanted to just add a little bit of texture. And it looks a little silly in the beginning, but then once you do it, you realize, wow, this is pretty cool. So you guys might want to use this for another painting. Um, for the person who's on here, can you go ahead and give me a Y in the chat to let me know that you are ready to go? that's going to be right to the right hand side. If you could just go ahead and give me a Y. And then, like I said earlier, if you cannot keep up, go ahead and just type in H, which tells me to hold. I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up. And we will get started as soon as you're ready. I'll show you my setup right now. Okay, right now we have a 10 by 20 canvas. And we set it up portrait style. So portrait is, the lengthwise is going up and down, not landscape, which is side by side. So once we go ahead and get that done, I want you guys to just dive right in. And I'm going to start with my one inch chip brush. Now what we do with the one inch chip brush is we are going to go ahead and just get right to it and we're going to start with the white. And we're going to start in our backdrop. So what I want to do is I want to take this chip brush and just go ahead and fully immerse it into my white paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the very, very top of my canvas. I know you guys can't see it. The camera angle needs to be a little bit higher. 
Maybe I'll move this for a second so you guys can see. But what I want to do is I quickly want to start working my way from the corner all the way to the middle. But what I'm doing is I'm doing this at an angle. If you guys can see, I'm doing this at a side to side angle because I want my streaks to run this way. And you'll see why. I'm going to load up my brush a little bit more with some paint. And I'm going to load it up with paint and I'm going to go ahead and keep continuing to drag that paint across all the way till I get to about the middle. You're going to end up using a lot of white for this. And even though you're not really going to see white when we start painting the backdrop, this just makes it so that the other colors pop even more. Which is why I do like laying white down over things. And later on we're going to be using a lot of white just to go ahead and make sure it goes down before any other color because then our colors are going to show through that much better. Alright, I'm going to keep continuing down. I want to make sure my canvas is nice and wet with a lot of paint. And if you want, you guys can go ahead and cover those sides. Make sure your canvas is getting fully covered. And I'm going to go about an inch down more and make sure I get to the middle of my canvas with this white. And I'm not washing out my brush. What I want to do is while that's all nice and wet, I want to take this brush and there's a turquoise color that's right next to my primary blue and I'm going to go ahead and dip it in my turquoise. without washing my brush. So I went ahead and I got quite a bit of paint on my brush and I want to start let's say halfway in between right here and I just want to brush across and I want to start blending in with that white. See that nice pretty color? Back and forth long brush strokes. You want to go all the way from one end all the way to the other just so you don't get any of that white showing through all the way from one end all the way to the other and what I'm going to do without adding more paint is I'm going to slowly keep working my way up on that canvas slowly work it all the way to the top I want to see blue everywhere but as you can see it gets a lot lighter as we go to the top now I want to drag that paint over I am seeing some white. Just drag it over until all that white is gone. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some more of that turquoise. Actually what I want to do is maybe clean off that brush. I want to make that turquoise really pop. So let's give our brush a good cleaning and I'll go Make sure your brush is nice and dry before we go ahead and dip into that turquoise. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and load up again with that pretty turquoise blue. And I'm going to go below the area that we already started on. And now because there's no white paint underneath it, we're getting that really intense turquoise coming through. Long brush strokes. Make sure that we go from one side of the canvas all the way to the other. And the thing with acrylic is it tends to dry pretty quick. So what I'm doing is I'm moving a little, I'm moving a little bit faster than I usually would because of the cool technique that we're going to get into. Okay. So I want to get a little bit more of that turquoise because I just love that turquoise so much. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up again and I'm going to add right underneath it. Just get more of that turquoise color in there. Back and forth, big strokes. And I can get the sides too. Get your sides of your canvas. Don't forget those side canvases. 
and maybe I just want to drag up a little bit of blue into this. And it could be streaky because you kind of want it to be streaky. Water has some definition to it. Now without washing out this chip brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip it straight into my primary blue, which is that true blue color you see. Now I'm really going to load up my paint because I'm going to be painting the rest of my canvas with this blue. So I'm going to start right where it's touching and long strokes back and forth, back and forth. All the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. Just make sure you're getting that blue. I'm going to go ahead and get some more. Okay. Remember we're going to be doing these brush strokes at an angle. You want to cover this entire canvas pretty quickly because what the technique is going to call for is wet paint. So before this dries, we need to make sure we lay a quick foundation of paint. Okay, make sure you got all your paint on here. Don't forget your bottom. Don't forget your sides. Don't want to see any bit of white canvas left. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this line in to that turquoise just very lightly. I'm just going to blend it in. I can even go a little bit further up into it just to make that blend that much easier. Nice long strokes, blending in that blue. Yep. Just kind of dragging all those colors in together. And now, because I kind of want this area down here to be a little bit darker, what I'm going to do without washing out my chip brush is I'm just very, very lightly going to dip the tips in black. And I'm just going to start at the corner, and I just want to get a little bit of black in there, just because I'm intensifying that bottom. I want it to look like the deep ocean, and as we go deeper, you know, it gets dark. So I'm just going to add some color down there just so I can make sure it's getting darker. Okay, maybe a little bit more black. Just a little bit of black. And I'm going to add some more black. Long brush strokes adding that black in, blending that to the bottom. I'm going to streak it up a little bit into my blue, just because it'll make our jellyfish pop that much more. Okay, as we do that, we're going to go ahead and give this brush a really good washing. Now here comes the fun part. So let me switch over real quick. What I want you guys to do is with your canvas still wet, because we just covered it in our blue paint, I want you to take your cup of water. I know it's got a little bit of paint color in it, but what you're going to do is you are just going to dip, let's say, four of our fingers into the water and we're going to hold it over the canvas. You don't need to flick it onto your canvas necessarily, but just choose a few places where you would like to drop water onto it. And this is kind of really cool. So you're going to drop a little bit of water onto your canvas. So watch what I'm doing because I'm just, I'm not taking that much. I just want a few, try and go dark. I just want a few drops just dropping off of my fingertips. And I'm going to do that right now with my canvas so you can see. I'm going to do that all over not everywhere, there's just going to be enough to get a little bit of speckles in the background. So as you can see, I'm just going to dip my fingers and I'm just going to kind of go over my canvas very lightly and I just want to, okay, in a little, little flicking motion you can 
and just kind of flick some water down. And this is just going to add some speckles in the backdrop. It's going to make it look more realistic. All the way at the top. I do want to cover all my canvas, but I just don't want to cover it too much with water. But I do want to give it some specks. Now, as you can see, what's going to happen is we are going to pull up a little bit of paint underneath. So, what I want you to do is take one of your napkins that you're not using for your brushes and just going to fold it a few times and we're only going to go over the areas that we just went over with the water because this does have a little bit of a pattern on it so we want to just very lightly touch where those little water droplets went so that we could pull up the paint. Alright, I'm going to switch back. Okay, so what I'm doing lightly is I'm going to go over See. And we're going to very, very lightly just pick up the paint. And see, I think my paint's a little too wet. try over here. It's a little drier. I'm just going to do this a little bit. And what I want to do let's see just kind of pull up that paint just where those drops are because I want to actually pull the paint off the canvas keep changing out your napkin and I want to pull that paint off the canvas, show a little bit of the white canvas underneath. But what I'm getting is I'm getting these cool little specks in the water. And that makes it look just more realistic. Make sure you're changing your napkin to where it's clean again. So when you go into the light areas, you're not pulling dark paint onto your light parts and vice versa. Like I just did right there. Let's go ahead and see if I can try and pull up some more of that. Okay. Okay. A few specks down here. until I'm happy with my specs, which I am. All right, now what I want you guys to go ahead and do at this point is we need to make sure this canvas is completely dry before we go ahead and start drawing with our chalk. So at this point, go ahead and pull out your blow dryer and we're going to go ahead and dry this for about 60 seconds. Make sure that your heat is set on low because if you have your heat too high, you guys are going to go ahead and crack the acrylic and we definitely do not want that. So let's do about 60 seconds on low.
little bit more than 60 seconds, but I saw that my paint was still a little bit shiny. Okay, I do have a little bit of wet spot still showing. So, yep, still got a little bit of wet spot, so I'm going to give it about another minute of drying. This process is really neat. We're gonna find, let me find my chalk. I dropped my chalk, hold on. Okay. So what we wanna do, gotta get my reference photo. But while your canvas is dry, make sure it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and take our piece of chalk and we're gonna just sketch the jellyfish head. Now the really cool thing about chalk is you could use one of your brushes that you haven't already used that's dry and whatever you don't end up painting you could go ahead and just use that dry brush to quickly and easily brush off any excess chalk that you didn't end up painting over. And that's a nice way to just keep things clean so you're not laying any paint down before you absolutely want to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just working the shape of the jellyfish and the jellyfish tends to have these little curved caved in areas so I'm not I'm just gonna keep tracing until I get happy with the shape that I'm working with kinda think of a half bowl with some scalloped edges. You guys know what scalloped edges are. See, I keep changing my mind, so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you just what I mean. If you don't like something, you can go ahead and just brush that out. And it's gonna brush out even more after everything's dry. I want my jellyfish head to come up a little bit more and have it go all the way up there. Yeah, about right there. I'm going to have it go in. I'm going to give it four little scallops. And I'm happy with that. Now, it's going to show a little bit of the back. So what I want to do is I just want to give it a little bit of scallops showing from the back end. Because jellyfish are transparent, you are going to see the back. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up from the inside just to give myself uh, direction on what I'm going to do for those little tentacles. They kind of have these like weird looking ribbon tentacles on some of the jellyfish I was looking at reference photos of. So I noticed they kind of look like they were swirling around and they're really thick so I kind of want to give myself a reference by just taking chalk and I just want to show where I'm going to have these ribbon like swirls. Yeah, I'm just going to have some swirls coming in here and going off my canvas. Again I'm going to come over here. I'm going to give myself some swirls. And I think I'm going to go off my canvas because those tentacles, tentacles are really long. And I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of tentacles right there. Okay, those are the ones I was mainly concerned about. So what you want to do here, you're going to leave your chocolate, 
you're going to grab your chisel brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to load this up with white and we are going to completely cover everything that we want to really pop in white. Just because when you use acrylic paint sometimes the pigment is kind of opaque, transparent. And so if you really want to make those fluorescent colors or primary colors really pop, you have to lay a foundation down beforehand, which in our case is going to be that fluorescent fuchsia and that yellow. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and paint everything white first. So let's go ahead and get your paintbrush loaded up with white. And I'm going to go and I'm going to start tracing over my chalk. Just trace over my chalk area. And what I'm doing, I'm doing right now just the top of my jellyfish. I'm not doing the bottom yet because there is a reason why. Jellyfish are transparent, so I don't want you guys painting in that area. But I do want you painting in the top of the jellyfish right now. Just nice little U shapes. That's all I'm doing. Big old U's. I'm giving it four U's. Okay. Just go in there and give it a nice U. Think of it that way. Okay. And I want this to be completely covered. I don't want to see streaks, or I should say the canvas underneath showing. I want to fully, fully cover this in white. Otherwise, that yellow is just not going to pop the way we want it to. And we want this to be a very vibrant, tropical jellyfish. Now I'm going to fill this whole entire jellyfish head, but I'm not doing the bottom yet. fill in this jellyfish head. Make sure none of that blue is showing through. Otherwise our yellow is going to turn a little yucky. And this is going to have to be completely dry before we start yelling, putting that yellow down. All right. Now what I told you, now we're going to work on that bottom, so just load up your chisel brush and you're just going to go and trace over that line. Just put all the pressure down on the brush and drag that brush. Make it nice and slow and easy, just drag it all the way till you get back. There you go. Got a little bit of it showing through here, so I'm going to add some more paint and just make sure there's no canvas showing through. Just going over that nice and slow. Okay. Now I'm going to start working on these little tentacles here. So what I want to do, I'm going to start on this one and I'm going to just drag it down and follow my chalk lines. And swirl it where it needs to be swirled. I need more paint. Just going to follow it. Swirl. Remember yours isn't going to look exactly like mine because no two jellyfish are alike. It is going to look different. You're going to have tentacles in different areas. Jellyfish just kind of do their own thing and they're everywhere. So don't think too much about it. If you're thinking too much, then it's not fun. We just want to make sure that we're getting a nice, thick, white line going down that we can cover later. Okay, I'm going to swirl this. And I'm going to follow it off. I'm going to come back and kind of trace over. And as I'm tracing over, I just kind of want to make it a little bit thicker. You want to thicken up those lines. Okay, so I'm going to trace over it, and as I trace over it, I'm going to thicken up those lines. I can even go ahead and fill that in, because that's all going to be painted fuchsia. Just 
picking up those lines. Down here, thicken them up. Okay. Make that tentacle nice and thick. And I'm going to do that to the same two other tentacles that I drew with my chalk. Just going to continue that down. Do a little trace with my white paint. Okay, if they're touching, we'll add some definition to them later, which separate them. Right now, I just am getting the shape of these guys down. I'm going to fill that in. And follow my line all the way down off my canvas. And again, if you don't go over your chalk exactly at the very end, you're able to use that dry brush and just brush off whatever extra chalk you have. Do not worry about that. Okay, I'm going to start thickening up my lines. thickening that up and now I'm going to go ahead and jump into my third tentacle just tracing that chalk and once we're done with this white outline completely we're going to dry this make sure it's extra extra dry because we don't want it messing with the colors that we're using we just want the colors that we're using to lay right on top of this white, not to blend in with this white. Okay. Okay, as you can see in the reference photo to the bottom left, I'm sorry, bottom right, um, there's a lot of little straight tentacles too. And in order to really make those pop, we are going to have to lay down some white. So let's go ahead and just put a little bit of white paint on your chisel brush and just pick out a few different places where you kind of want those straight tentacles to go and it could go over those tentacles you're currently working on just so that we have paint laid down just a few because we're going to add some more white later just going to add one right here because this really needs to pop Add a nice one right there. Just like a straight one coming down. And maybe off the canvas. Okay. And maybe one right here. Doesn't go off the canvas, just kind of sits right there. All right. Now what I want to do, make sure <clears throat> none of that canvas is showing through at the top because now we're going to make sure it's all dried. And then we're going to dive in with our yellow. So there's a little spot right here showing through. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the blow dryer again. And we're going to hit this until it's absolutely dry. So it's going to be a minute or two minutes, low heat setting, remember. Just giving you guys something to look at while I'm drying my jellyfish. And I'll revert back to the jellyfish.
think we should be good here. Let's go ahead and test it. I picked up a little bit of white over here. Okay, it's pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do, make sure I've got a nice clean chisel brush. and dry that off. And we are going to dip this straight into our yellow. And this is where all the fun begins. Okay, so go ahead and lo load your chisel brush up with a lot of yellow paint. And we're gonna start by just going over the top of the jellyfish's head and covering completely that jellyfish, just the top part. And remember, do this nice and slow. And it doesn't matter if you go a little bit outside of your white lines, but you do want to cover up all that white paint. Because if you don't cover up that white paint, that's just going to show and not look good. So try your best to just slowly go over those lines. Okay. Load up some more yellow paint. We're going to finish tracing this jellyfish's head. Make sure you're going, if anything, just a little bit outside of those white lines. And you want to go ahead and start to fill in that jellyfish head. Finish tracing. Going over those lines just ever so slightly past that white. And then filling in the body. You want to use a good amount of yellow. So we're really trying to intensify that bright yellow. We also want that yellow to be wet when we start adding in our other color too. So let's go ahead and quickly fill in the top of that jellyfish so we can add color into it. And this is where I mentioned really filling in that white underneath because you guys can see some of my streaks are showing through. And that's because I probably should have laid that white on a little bit thicker underneath. But that's okay because every jellyfish is different. So I'm just going to go ahead, fill in all that color. Now what I'm going to do next is choose this back line and I don't want to go over my tentacles but I kind of just want to go over that white line and give a little bit of yellow behind those tentacles. So you can brush a little bit into them. We are going to put another color over it. Just add a little bit of yellow because you want that blue to show through because you want the person looking at your picture to know that this jellyfish is see-through. Okay. And what I can do now is load up a little bit more yellow and pick out a few of those tentacles that were just straight down and now I'm going to add some yellow on top of them. Remember what I said about going, you could go a little bit over 
your white, just make sure you're covering all that white. Okay, it's gonna make it, it has a nice little pop to it because you can really see that color coming through because of that white laid, we laid underneath it. And now you got those little speckles in the background. see. I might paint this one yellow. Okay. Just make sure you can go outside that line. Just make sure you're covering all that white. I think I'm going to go this other straight one I created. Lay down all of our yellow for right now. We're going to go back in later and add more yellow, but this is the yellow we need to lay down right now. Okay, go ahead and clean out your brush. Give it a good cleaning. Dry it off well. And now we're going to go ahead and dip it into the fuchsia. Now the paint is still a little bit wet and that's exactly what we want. So while this fuchsia and also well, while this yellow is still wet, what we want to do is you kind of want to start somewhere over here and just trace the outside of these scallops. And when we do that, it's going to kind of blend into the yellow and create an orange, but we want that. We want that streaky orange to show because it just looks like there's another color that we really don't have being formed here. So just slowly trace out those scalloped edges. Get more paint if needed. Don't clean out your brush. We're just going to trace out the scalloped edges and kind of bring it out up into the middle. Again, on the side, just going to drag it down and follow those scalloped edges and just bring it up the side a little bit. You want that orange kind of look going on. And then just to add a little bit of shade, I'm going to add a little bit of a streak on the top of its head. Okay. Now because it kind of has that orange, I do want to get rid of that, so I'm going to wash it out. Wash out your brush. And make sure you dry it really well. And we're going to go back into that fuchsia, load it up with a good amount, and I'm going to trace that white line that was in back, but I, I'm not going to go over those tentacles, but I am going to trace that white line. It's going to be a nice bright fuchsia, and we're going to make that fuchsia so we can go over that tentacle. Make sure you cover all the white. And we're going to cover that. We're going to stop there. And we're going to continue this back up into the jellyfish head. Cover up all that white. Okay. Now I picked up a little bit of the yellow, so I'm going to clean my brush off again. Dry it off dip it back into the fuchsia 
And now I'm going to trace these little ribbon areas. So all I'm going to do is just fill in all that white. And when this dries, it's going to dry a little bit brighter than what you're seeing. Might look a little dark, but as it dries, it will lighten. I just want to trace and fill in all that white. Okay. This is going to be the longest part, the most time consuming, is just filling in all this pink. But that pink is crucial because that pink really makes that yellow pop and makes your jellyfish stand out. So you just want to fill in all that white. Okay. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, this, is be, this would be a good time to just kind of step away, take a deep breath, continue on when you want to. You could pause the video and just come back. So this 4th of July weekend is coming up. I'm going to, at the very end of this video, show you guys what we're working on next weekend. But it is going to be fireworks and campfire inspired. So I'll show you guys that. Hopefully you guys have some really fun things planned. I know there's a lot of stuff that's closed. I go, it's my father's birthday on 4th of July, so we celebrate him every year, we go to the beach, but unfortunately we are not able to go to the beach and go camping this year, so it is a bummer. This will be the first time in a very long time we've never gone to the beach. I do miss watching those fireworks go off over the ocean. It is so spectacular, but you know, there's next year. This year we're just going to probably barbecue. Alright. Keep loading that brush up with pink. Yep. Continue to make sure you cover all that white. Doesn't have to look perfect. It'll dry much nicer. Okay, but if I didn't have this white down, you guys would almost not be able to see that pink at all. So the white, laying down white is super crucial. You'll just find that some acrylics just don't have that much pigment in them, especially when you're dealing with fluorescence like this, and it is just crucial that you lay down your white first, otherwise you're not going to get any of that beautiful fluorescent color popping through. It's going to look muted and dull. And we don't want that. At least not for this painting. Add a little bit of color over here. Alright. Come back over here, finish this tentacle. That's another thing I miss. I miss going to the zoos. I want to go to the zoo with the kids. Take a look at all those jellyfishes in the aquariums. But that's another thing on my check off list as soon as things open up. Ooh, but one thing's for sure this weekend we are definitely making some wars. That is a 4th of July tradition gotta make some oars. And if you're in Girl Scouts, hopefully you girls know you should be judging or have one person be the judge and from 1 to 10 the perfect s'more grade them on how that marshmallow smushes down. That was a classic. Gotta make some oars doing Girl Scout, Girl Scout campfires which is kind of like the painting that we're going to be doing next week for the regular class on Thursday nights. It's going to be a big campfire out in the woods. Pretty cool. Alright.
like I said, this is probably going to take the most time is just painting in this purple. Because then after this, it's really just adding the fine details and then you're finished. So this is going to take the longest. Don't get frustrated if it's taking you longer than you think or expected. I think also adding white down kind of makes your canvas a little bit thirstier for paint. It tends to absorb paint a little bit more. So really make sure that white is dry because your canvas will be thirsty. Oh, I hear the ice cream man. That is another thing to be excited about these days. I've got my favorite ice cream. Watermelon with tamarind. Those are the best. All right. Just gonna go ahead and make sure I'm not seeing any of that white popping through. My paint's a little wet up here, so I'm going to be very careful touching it back up to the top of the head. And I see white over here. Let's so make sure you're getting all your white. All right. So from here, let's go ahead and get this completely dry again before we start layering on paints, because then it's going to start getting a little bit of funky colors going. So I'm going to get my blow dryer, and we are going to start blow drying again. can see but I'm still gonna move forward the pink is gonna be a little bit streaky looking but once we start layering on all the details that's gonna kind of fade away and you're not gonna see so much of it but what I want to do right now is I want to add in some more tentacles so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chisel brush make sure you wash that dry it off really well and I'm gonna start with those little white tentacles that you see coming down. These little guys are weird because they kind of have these little knots in them. Like every inch or so you're going to see these little knots. So these guys are going to kind of be flying by everywhere. They're a little bit shorter than the tentacles around it. So I'm going to go over some of my tentacles I've already painted. And I'm just going to drag that and just come completely off. And the neat thing I can do is just load up my chisel brush again and then every inch or so I'm just going to plop it down and wiggle it. 
just to get those little knots in. Plop it down and wiggle it. Just plop down and wiggle. And you get those cool little knots. Okay, I'm going to add some more. I'm going to add one maybe right here. And this little guy is going to come straight off the canvas. And he looks a little transparent, so I'm going to go over him again. Straight off the canvas. Same thing, dip my chisel brush in, and then every inch or so, I'm just going to kind of wiggle. Get those little knots going. I do not know what these little tentacles are called. They are pretty crazy looking. In fact, I don't think I ever want to see a jellyfish in the wild. That would not probably end in fun. Alright, let's go ahead and make another tentacle. Let's see. What about this one? Comes down and we're going to have it go underneath that yellow tentacle. So I don't necessarily want to paint over it. And I'm just going to continue this white down and off the page with the canvas. Okay, every inch or so, just going to give it that little knot. Okay. Gonna dip my chisel brush again. Let's do another one over here. Coming behind one of my tentacles so I don't take away from that pretty white that pretty yellow. And we'll be crossing over him right there. Again, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure some of your tentacles sit on top and some of them sit below or behind. You just want them everywhere. Again, every inch or so I'm just going to lay it down and just give it a little wiggle side to side. Make those little knots in this tentacle. Fill that in. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And my paint's dry so I can go right over that. Okay, and I feel like there's a lot of area right here, so let's make another one, maybe behind all these tentacles. So I'll start right here, go behind this pink tentacle, and then come back out right here. All right, and again with the knots, just give it some knots every inch or so. Okay. Now what I want to do is focus on where the sun's coming down off the water. So we've got it angled where the sun's beaming down on this jellyfish. So what we want to do is, of course, wherever the sun first touches the jellyfish, we want to highlight. So you're going to want to dip your chisel brush again in white. And you want to just trace that very top, just like this, just where it barely touches the top, and maybe where we did those little lines, just on top of those, just so like the sun is barely kissing it. And then I like to think as the jellyfish moves upwards, it's kind of picking up a little bit of light. Need more paint. Picking up a little bit of light on those scalloped edges. So I'm going to put some highlights on those scalloped edges. Just because the light is being picked up off of them. Now the same thing goes for the tentacles. The sunlight is going to come through that water and shine on the tentacles. So what we need to do is we need to add highlights. And to add highlights, you're going to kind of find where you think the sun might hit those 
then just on the left side, kind of go and give it some little highlights where you think the sun might be hitting those tentacles. Okay. So just where you think the sun might hit those tops of those tentacles, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white. It's getting a little busy, but it's a good kind of busy. It's just sort of trace where some of the light might be hitting that tentacle. And there's no rhyme or reason, there's no right or wrong. Kind of trace where you think it's going to hit. And that also goes for our yellow tentacles. Even though they're bright yellow, we still need the sun to pick up them. And the good thing is, if you need to do cleanup around your edges, this is a good time where you can clean that up with white. I'm just going to add some white wherever I think the sun's going to come through and hit that. All right, and now that I have my white down, I still feel like I need a little bit more white right here, so I'm going to add an additional little tentacle coming down off the page, off the canvas. Add my knots. Need more paint. Okay, I got my knots. Now I want to focus on my shadows. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that chisel brush in the water and find my fine tip zero brush. And I think I knocked it over. So bear with me for a second. It's all the way over here. And I want to dip that in the black. Because I want to pick up the shadows now. Okay. So I loaded that up. What I want to focus on is where I think there's going to be a lot of shadows. So I'm going to start on these little tentacles. And I don't want to go over those little bumps or knots that we made, so I'm just going to kind of trace on the right hand side my little tentacles, so it looks like I'm casting a shadow on them. So I'm just lifting up, going in between those, and adding little shadows. Doesn't seem like a lot, but in the long run it does make quite a bit of difference starts breaking up all of this, it starts making it, it, you bring out everything, everything looks well defined. Again, I'm just lifting it up, I'm not touching those little knots, I'm going to the right of the tentacles, just adding a little bit of shadows, so it looks more realistic. Okay. No, it's a tiny little brush. Again. Just keep adding those fine little details and everything will start falling into place. Just lift up. Don't brush those little knots. You just want to do it right to the right of it. Just barely. So it's like the sun is shining down and casting a shadow. You can even go down here and just 
add a little bit of black underneath to show that you are casting a shadow. Okay, and the same thing goes with these pink ten uh, tentacles. I'm going to go to the right. And I'm just going to start tracing the right side with this little fine zero brush, adding some shadows. And where it swirls, I might add a little shadow. And that's just going to make it pop that much more. It really does, when you start adding little shadows into things, it really does start making all of your pictures really come to life and pop. A lot of people tend to forget about shadows, and that's probably one of the most important things you can ever do for a painting, is really learn about shadows and how light is casted on, on things, because if you've got shadows down, you can do just about anything. That's like the hardest thing to work on is shadows. Shadows and highlights. But once you got them down, everything just looks that much better. Okay. I'm gonna come over here, add a little bit of shadow. Just a little shadow to this guy. Shadow down here. This takes a little bit of time because you are working with a very tiny brush. Make sure you're breaking up everything by adding shadows to the right of each tentacle. It's just going to make it pop that much better. And really, once you're done with your little tentacles and your shadows, you're pretty much done with your painting. You guys are really close, so don't give up yet. I know you've been doing this for a while, it feels like. I'm just going to go over each of my tentacles and make them lined on the right hand side. So on the right side of each tentacle, I'm just going to put a little shadow in. consuming and tedious. That really does make a difference. All right, guys, we're almost there. I might miss a few. Not on purpose. Just trying to make sure I have everything covered. There's a lot of tentacles. So I want to make sure I get them all. And then that dark little corner down here would be a perfect place for you to go ahead and just leave your initial and your signature when you're done. We're almost done. Let me make sure I got all my little shadows. Okay. Give it a once over. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Alright, I 
think I'm pretty happy with my highlights and my lowlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wash out my little fine brush because this is a great brush to use to do your little signature. I'm going to go ahead and dip it in my white. I'm going to go ahead and sign it right over here. All right. Go ahead and dip that in the water. All right, guys, now that was Thursday night's regular painting, which was our jellyfish. And if you guys are interested, next week we've got a few that are kind of um, geared towards patriotic weekend that we just had, hopefully. So next Tuesday, we're going to do our beginner's painting class. And what this is is just fireworks over some water. Very easy. Anybody can do it. So I do recommend this for beginning, beginning, beginning painting. That's next Tuesday at 7. We're going to do that live. And then we're going to do, on Thursday night again at 7, is going to be our fireside campfire. So this is going to be a really fun one. Um, I definitely don't recommend this for beginners, but it is really easy too. Uh, but this will be something that we're going to be doing next Thursday at 7 o'clock. All right, you guys, well, I had a good time. Hope you did, too. Remember, if you guys didn't finish, you can always go ahead, pause it, come back whenever you like.